pleasure. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be with you today uh, to discuss uh, one of the very important symptoms in pediatrics, uh, bleeding child. How to assess and how to manage uh, a bleeding child. It's my pleasure to be with you. Let us share my screen. Bleeding child, how to manage. Uh, my name is Ilham Yusri. I'm professor of pediatrics and head of the pediatric hematology and bone marrow transplantation unit, Cairo University. And it's a pleasure being with you. The outline that I will cover, uh, how to assess and treat uh, a child presenting with bleeding. And this is the only outline. And then I will conclude. Conclusion, let us start assessment and the treatment of a child with bleeding disorder. As you all know, when we have a wound in the blood vessel like this, there's a wound in the blood vessels, the circulating uh, red blood cell and platelets will be attracted to this wound because the subendothelial cells, the subendothelial when there is a wound, the subendothelial tissue will be exposed we, there is uh, a von Willebrand factor will be uh, exposed from this subendothelium. This factor will add her to the platelets. Once the platelets add her to this wounded blood vessel, this platelet will be activated. And look now what, what happened when this, this platelet activated. It will change its shape and uh, uh, increase uh, its surface area and start to activate the coagulation cascade. The steps at that moment, which is platelet adherence and blood vessel reaction, this is called the primary hemostatic steps. Once it moved to activation of these coagulation factor, we started what's called the secondary hemostasis. We do have two uh, pathway for the coagulation activation. The extrinsic, this is the extrinsic tissue factor, factor seven uh, will generate activated factor 10. And the intrinsic pathway, which is started by activated factor 12, 11, nine, 10, then at the end we reach the activated factor 10. Once we have activated factor 10, this will generate the thrombin, and this thrombin will uh, activate the fibrinogen to fibrin. And this coagulation cascade, when it works, it will activate more and more uh, uh, thrombin uh, generation, and this is called thrombin burst. And this thrombin burst will activate more and more platelets, will change the platelets and make it activated platelets. And this activated platelets will express these receptors, which is called the fibrinogen receptor, the, G the GP2B3A receptor, which attract more to the fibrinogen and more fibrin will, will be included in this thrombus to make it solid thrombus. And this is the, how we can stop uh, the bleeding when we have a wounded blood vessel. And from this mechanism, I think it's easy now to know what are the causes of a bleeding disorder. The causes of a bleeding disorder, the generalized causes of a bleeding disorder, the generalized causes of a bleeding disorder may be vascular, may be platelets, and the platelets may be count or function, and maybe problem in the coagulation factors. And all these problems may be congenital, may be acquired. So it's easy now to know the generalized bleeding uh, disorder. It's either vascular platelets, either count or function or coagulation factor. And all these causes may be congenital, may be acquired. We are, as a clinician, we can, we can, we can suspect the cause from the clinical 
the clinical assessment of our patient. The question, how can we assess our patient to detect what is the cause of his or her bleeding manifestation? Just remember, when you assess your patient, you want to know what is the, 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 what is the problem that you have. Is it a primary or secondary hemostasis or mixed hemostasis? Primary hemostasis, the patient, the patient presents with mucous membrane and subcutaneous bleeding. Skin and mucous membrane bleeding. And this primary hemostatic problem, it's always due to blood vessels and platelet problem. Because in the primary hemostatic defect, the patient is not able to form the platelet block. It's not able to form platelet adherence to the subendothelial wound. And this is called the primary hemostatic defect. primary hemostatic defect, the manifestation, bleeding, sub skin and subcutaneous, bleeding to the skin like purpura, ecchymosis, and mucous membrane, bleeding gums, uh, 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 hematuria, it's a mucous membrane bleeding, obstaxis. In patient presented, uh, has a secondary hemostatic defect, any patient has a secondary hemostatic defect, they will present with joint and soft tissue bleeding. And the problem behind secondary hemostatic defect is the clotting factor. These patients not able to generate L thrombin and fibrinogen to hold this platelet block strong together and form what's called firm clot. And patient with secondary hemostatic defect, they present with joint and soft tissue bleed. What about the mixed bleeding disorder? Mixed bleeding disorder, a patient with, 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 with diseases that can mix between uh, the platelet adherence and the, the activation of the secondary hemostasis. This group of patients uh, is uh, present with a mixed symptom. Mixed symptom. It's mucous membrane, deep organ bleeding, uh, and these patients mostly they are factor seven deficiency and von Willebrand disease because these two uh, factors mix between the platelet and the coagulation. So now we can, we can assess our patient to know provisionally the cause behind bleeding disorder. Please, when we ask how to assess your patient to reach the diagnosis, please don't forget we are clinicians. Any assessment should start with history taking, followed by thorough examination followed by investigation. Please suspect the diagnosis following this, uh, th these steps. Don't rush, don't rush to investigation. Please don't rush for, uh, to investigation. So how to assess? By proper history taking, then by thorough examination. Lastly, by asking for some test or some investigation. Let us ask ourselves, what are the history point, important history point in a child presented with bleeding? Think, what are these points? What should we ask for uh, in a case presented with bleeding? Definitely, we want to know the age of onset, to know is it acquired or con uh, uh, congenital or acquired. Recurrency of the bleeding, because the recurrent bleeding indicates uh, there is a problem uh, uh, need to be investigated. The site of the bleeding, to know we do, we do have primary or secondary or one of the mixed causes, is it spontaneous or induced to uh, detect the severity of the bleeding symptom? Family history is very important. Family history is very important because most of the congenital problem inherited in a different inheritance. Some of them X-linked, some of them autosomal recessive. So 
few of them autosomal dominant. So family history is very important to detect the inherited condition. But what about the, the examination? What are the important points we should look uh, uh, or detect in our patient? Definitely, we should assess the general condition of the child and the conscious level because bleeding may be intracranial. We should search for the site and examine the site and the type of the bleeding. Please search for any associated anomaly and skeletal anomalies and hemangiomas because part of the uh, congenital bleeding disorder uh, uh, may be associated with skeletal anomalies, hemangiomas, or some anomalies. Please search for pallor because pallor indicates severity of the, uh, of the problem. Search for jaundice because jaundice may be a clue for the disease behind. Search for liver and spleen because don't forget and lymph node, definitely liver, spleen, and lymph node, because uh, hematological malignancy can present with a bleeding disorder. So these are the important points in history and the examination. We are, we as a clinician should, should search to assess our child presented with bleeding. As we just said, it's very important to assess the severity of the bleeding by asking your patient some questions. Your clinical assessment is the key to identify the severity of the bleeding. And here is uh, some models, some models, a bleeding assessment tool, bleeding assessment tool called the BAT. This bleeding assessment tool generated by organization called the International Society of Thrombosis and uh, hemostasis, the ISTH, and by using this tool, we can assess the severity of the bleeding. And it's, it's very easy to quantify the bleeding history of our patient to identify the severity. And it is an easy tool because it's freely accessed through our mobile. And when you just write the name, uh, it will be opened in your mobile very easy and you can enter the data of your child by asking these questions. And once you click on the score, the score here will be changed. And you, in a few seconds, you can identify the bleeding score of your child. If your child has a bleeding score three or greater, this denotes abnormal bleeding. Yeah, but this child has a bleeding manifestation that deserve, deserve uh, uh, your care. Please open this tool and try it with your patient. Here is some of the photos that uh, indicate what, what, what things we should look for uh, during examining our uh, patient. This is the hemangioma, look for the hemangioma. This is the skeletal anomaly, absent radius. This is another skeletal anomaly, a tripharyngeal thumb. So please don't forget during examination, search for uh, 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 spleen and liver, uh, skeletal anomalies, presence of the hemangioma so that may present in some of the diseases presented with bleeding. What are the investigation after clinical assessment of our patient? We are now ready to ask for some investigation. These investigation, please categorize into initial primary investigation and advanced specific test. Please don't rush for the advanced test before these initial primary test. The initial primary test include definitely CBC to know the platelet count, to assess uh, the hemoglobin and the, the white disease to, uh, to be uh, sure uh, it's just uh, bleeding, not affecting the hemoglobin and lead to anemia, or not the case is not a case of band cytopenia, so full blood count is very important. One of the important parameters in the blood count is the what's called the mean platelet volume. The mean platelet volume is important because part of the diseases 
presented with bleeding may have normal platelet volume, normal platelet size. Some of them may have small platelet size. Some of them may have big platelet size. So very important to assess the complete blood picture to know the, the, the counts and to know the mean platelet count. Peripheral blood film is very important to ask the lab uh, physician to uh, make a film uh, searching for any abnormal cell. As we just mentioned, hematological malignancy can present with bleeding. So please detect there is uh, a, a, the possibility of the presence of any abnormal cells or any abnormal uh, white disease inclusions, any abnormal morphology that may be a clue to diagnose the cause of the bleeding. Other primary test is the uh, coagulation uh, assay, the prothrombin time, the activated thromboplastin time, and the INR. The prothrombin time, it is the screening test for the extrinsic pathway. What is the factor in the extrinsic pathway? Think with me. What is the factor? It is factor seven. So prothrombin time, it is a good screening test for the extrinsic pathway. And the factor in the extrinsic pathway is factor seven. And definitely INR, it is the international normalization ratio. It is uh, very important. Once we do have prolonged prothrombin time, definitely the INR will be prolonged. The other screening test for the coagulation uh, cascade is the activated partial thromboplastin time, the, the PTT. The activated partial thromboplastin time, it is a good screening test for the intrinsic coagulation factor. What are the intrinsic? Think with me. Try to think and remember, what are the intrinsic factor? It's factor 12, 11, 9, and 8. Uh, if both are prolonged, this may indicate the common pathway, which is start from factor 10, prothrombin, factor 2, fibrinogen, factor 1. Sometime we need to do what's called mixing study. What's mixing a study? Mixing a study is to repeat the prothrombin time and the activated partial thromboplastin time, but after addition of normal plasma. If the, these two tests normalized, return back to normal value, this indicate a deficient factor in the patient plasma. But if these two tests still prolong it after adding normal plasma, this may indicate the presence of abnormal antibody in the patient uh, plasma. So mixing study can differentiate between what's called deficient factor level as a count and uh, qualitative, qualitative defect uh, uh, in, in, in the function by uh, destruction, not but the count. The count uh, is normal. Bleeding time is very important, or it's slightly important to diagnose or to screen for the primary hemostatic factor. The primary hemostatic factor is the blood vessels and the platelets. So bleeding time, prolonged bleeding time, may indicate vessel problem or platelet problem. But please don't do the bleeding time when you have a low platelet count because for sure it will be prolonged. Uh, so it, it will lose its value. Uh, bleeding time should be done in cases with normal platelet count. And if it is prolonged, it may indicate a platelet function problem or a blood vessel problem. These are the specific tests. Once you got the result of this specific test, you are now ready to put your clinical assessment on the result of this initial uh, test. And now you are ready to ask for specific test, advanced test. Your request for this advanced test based on 
the data you, you collected from the clinical assessment and from the initial, uh, initial uh, lab results. Let us take an example. In cases presented with mucous membrane and subcutaneous bleeding, and the CBC showed low platelet counts. So now we do have a case of thrombocytopenia. You may ask, you may ask for bone marrow assessment. In cases presented with mucous membrane or subcutaneous bleeding, and the CBC showed normal platelet count, but the bleeding time was prolonged. Now we may have vessel or platelet function problem. The vessel, we will, we will screen the child for any collagen vascular, uh, pathology, collagen vascular diseases. And now, if there is, there is no evidence of vasculopathy, definitely we can ask for a platelet function because we do have prolonged bleeding time with normal platelet count. We can ask for flow cytometry to detect the, uh, the, the, the receptors on the platelet surface. We may ask for the electron microscopy to see the granules inside the platelets. If we do have deep bleeding in the joint and muscle bleeding, the CBC was normal, it showed ble a normal platelet count. The BT and or BTT was prolonged. This will indicate factor deficiency. So according what's what, what, what test is prolonged? Is it the BT or the BTT? We will ask for the clotting factor assay uh, that fit with the, with the, with the prolonged uh, test. If we do have prolonged BT, we will ask for factor seven assay. If we do have a prolonged BTT, we will ask for uh, the most common factors, eight, factor nine, uh, definitely, don't forget, we may, we may find all these things as normal and we may go for genotype, genotype or uh, molecular analysis. This is a picture of platelet aggregation test. Uh, 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 platelet aggregation test, it is a test. Uh, it's a bit expensive, one of the advanced tests. Don't ask for this test except if you have clinical data and initial test result that indicate uh, uh, a platelet function problem. And if you have a platelet function problem, you will test the platelet function by adding these uh, mediators and you will find the uh, platelet function in response to these mediators. In this picture, we do have abnormal aggregation with the ADB, with the epinephrine and collagen, but normal response to restocytine. Normal response. This is the result of this platelet aggregation. Advanced, one of the advanced investigation, as we just said, and we can do a flow cytometry for the platelets to detect the CDs on the surface of the platelets. One of the very important CDs on the platelets is the CD41 and CD61. Absence or decrease the percent of these two uh, uh, CDs may indicate uh, that they may indicate the diagnosis of one of the platelet function problem called the Glanzmann disease. How to treat? We finished how to uh, assess our patient presented with bleeding disorder. Now, how to treat? Very simply, how to treat? Our treatment is categorized into two parts. Uh, treatment uh, the bleeding episode and, uh, and other is to prevent further bleeding and to prepare our patient for any surgery or invasive procedure. If the patient presented to us with bleeding, don't forget the first step is a supportive care, life support. Our role is to save lives, life support. Then we can try any local measures like pressure, cold ferment, and conservative treatment like adding the antifibrinolytic drugs, then we will move to specific treatment if the diagnosis is known and we know the diagnosis and what's the 
specific therapy for our case. This is the life support measures, stabilize the child ABC and priority always for supporting life. Conservative treatment and local measure include pressure, nasal packing, gelatin, uh, gelatin sponge for its taxes, uh, fibrin glue, a fibrin glue or thrombin, antifibrinolytic, and the dose of the antifibrinolytic is uh, the, the, the capro, uh, is 15 to 25 milligram per kilogram, two to three times per day, and please don't exceed four grams per day. Four grams means eight tablets per day, don't exceed. Sometimes we need gynecological consultation for hormonal treatment if the uh, patient present, presenting to us with menorrhagia or uterine bleeding. Specific treatment in a case of a bleeding child always depend on the, the final diagnosis. Depend on the final diagnosis. Based on the final diagnosis, we will give the specific treatment for this bleeding child. As an example, if finally we diagnose our patient as hemophilia A, hemophilia A means factor eight deficiency, definitely the specific treatment will be by replacement, uh, factor eight replacement, uh, factor eight replacement. We reach the conclusion, definitely we can assess a child presented with bleeding and assessment always start with clinical assessment and by clinical assessment, we can suspect uh, uh, the, the bleeding disorder, its cause and its severity. Don't rush for investigation. To assess the severity, just use a tool that, which is called the bleeding assessment tool. It's very easy, present in our mobile, just assess and get the score, the bleeding score of your patient. The investigation needed categorized into initial and advanced. Please don't go for the advanced test except after knowing the clinical data of your patient and the result of the initial test. Specific advanced test always depend on the result of the clinical assessment and the initial lab test. To treat is to treat a bleeding child presenting with current bleeding and to prevent further bleeding if the patient presents with bleeding, life support, local measure and conservative treatment, specific treatment is uh, needed. And thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be with you uh, today. And I hope uh, by this short video, I can uh, simplify uh, how to assess and to manage a bleeding child. Thank you so much.